So but my point is, is that of course um, that's the case, that one of the most desirable objects that, a, a, that an artist can produce is something that you can't sell. That's the problem. Can I um, use my power of being on the panel to talk, to give you a little um, preamble that I wrote earlier, <laughs> which I think might add to this. Um... <coughs> I rely on you. You teach me things I never knew. I also hope to have an impact on you too. Wishful thinking on my part, I know. But wishful thinking is what got me here and a lot of hard work. We seem to work a lot in the contemporary art industries, often complaining that the money we earn nowhere near covers the time spent working on something. The invisible labour of ourselves and others that goes into producing something adds to the value of the work. Value, as we've discussed already, doesn't have to mean price. What I pay for a pack of sausages doesn't always equal the value I place on them, speculative or during the act of eating them. I think we are talking here about the added extra value, that surplus, that bonus, the thing you can't put your finger on, the thing that keeps most of us interested in making and being with art. That unknown, some call it an aura, an ambiguity, it could actually be a bit embarrassing it's the thing other people know but you haven't got a grasp of yet. It's a dream you've still got to have, or that you have had, but wish it was a bit more vivid so you could tell someone about it later. This involves a process of justification, legitimation, and constant remystification to keep the illusion of art intact, to keep it rolling. The visual art industries that we're talking about, maybe, need this bonus or attic cult to keep the self mythologizing in order to survive. That, I think, is where a large chunk of its value lies. Of course, many of us, and this has come up already, are interested in moving beyond and outside that system, but inevitably twang back into it, a bit bruised, but the aura strengthened by a pathetic attempt to escape it. Oh, how radical! How avant-garde, they say. Oh, how independent. Um, acts that fall off the edge, never, but never bother to enter, get forgotten about, that just aren't interesting. They are the places that aren't on the legitimised art radar, but even they, of course, are ripe for commercialisation. Every fair has its fringe. How do we devalue and depreciate our worth? our work and worth, whilst avoiding the romanticisation of the precarious art worker, whilst earning a living at the same time. I'm interested in the forms of exchange that can reshuffle values. I want to avoid turning experiences into packaged bits of information ready for resale. I want to provide a service, but not the one you want. I want to meet you and work something out without the valorising machines of commerce and state. <coughs> so where does this leave us? We could continue to chase our tails, or seek out others to give us that well-needed slap on the back. An encouraging thumbs up, keep going, don't give up, success is just around the corner. Or we could keep going to self-congratulatory conferences, which I seem to keep going to, um, <laughs> which supply adverts for each other's services big back-patting exercises in group therapy that convince us there is value in what we do and that it is a valued profession. Or how about a network of prodding friendly enemies, a Chantal new term which I find quite useful, um, that, remind us of, that can remind us as a world beyond the self-validating art enclosure, a world that is full of difference and contradictions, of mocking and misunderstandings. I think we can thrive in that world. It's certainly more realistic than the dream of being herded into a freeze pen by sheepdogs. It is perhaps this network that we are already in that is global, informal and self-motivated, that is a place for rejecting and reinventing value. I think it is a network of dependency and addiction, but at least we acknowledge that. 
Its players utilise the values placed on their art to shoehorn something else in, something other in. It's a network of tricksters, of monsters, of clones and drones that keep trying to do stuff that no one else wants. An anti-value, invisible network that feeds and steals off the legitimate systems of commerce to do its own dirty work while no one else is watching, but that lots of people come to value in a roundabout sort of way. Then we leapfrog over that and go on to something else. This is not a counter network, but the one, one that is entwined and validated by the systems it vilifies and rejects. It is a network reliant on negotiation and shapeshifters and compromise. It is not consistent, but neither is it pandering to the powers that define it. Chameleon-like, we can get what we want without taking sides. That's my <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think that it's, you don't go far enough. I mean, I think it's, um, you know, uh, I think to get away from Michelangelo, etc., and into, into the world we live in now, what is, what is our only value? You know, we have no absolute values except one. We push right to the end, we, have, we all hold that a man's life has an absolute value. And, you know, the things that we do that we value, we value because it's the living of that life. They're not extra things or, you know, added value, you know, they're not extra. These are the core things. You know. No, I think you will get back to the language This is where I think <laughs> that... Down the specs of marks, invocations. I've had to translate it some of it, <laughs> but I I do feel that that you're that you're you're quite right in this, um, and, and simply, and, and but I, I think that I I go I go further. I mean, I think that um, what what you're talking about, what you describe. I mean, if we were talking about poetry now, um, no, no no one expects poets to make a living. School students every every year, thousands of art school students graduate. I mean, you know, they're you're not graduating all of these art school students, so they can they can join a thing which already exists. That thing is not going to exist by the time they got they get there. They're making the thing, the world they come into. You know, I mean, I, there's no need to worry and get yourselves upset about the commercial goals. It's really, I mean, you can do whatever you like. Um, anyway, that's what how are artists going to eat and live? Yeah. In the same water. What was it? Have you tried that? Have you tried that? Wait a minute, excuse me. Have you tried sitting out in the street for 15 years rubbing snow off things and, and getting pennies in my hat? I doubt it. Have you tried breaking into buildings? I doubt it. Oh, you really don't have to. Have you looked in the East End at all? Have you been to the East End? Have you actually left St. Martin's? <laughs> <laughs> Business cycles, business is a very important part of it as well. Yes. Any type of exchange. 